Now the important thing, and maybe you want to underline this, right? Is this height business? It must be perpendicular. It must be perpendicular to the cross section because it's easy to pick, just as we just discussed. It's easy to pick the wrong number, okay? If you pick the wrong number, right? What you're doing is no longer thinking of this as a prism, right? So I've cut it in this way and got get the same here. I'm going to do it now. You're going to get the same cross section every time, right? But obviously, this is not the only way that I can cut up. Where is my attachment? I don't know. This is not the only way I can cut up this shape, right? Who said I had to cut it this way? I can cut it in other ways, right? For instance, I could cut it across ways, yeah? Um, so I've got this kind of, it's still the same shape, it's still the same shape, it still has the same volume, okay? But I don't want to cut it like this, right? I want to avoid doing this. Why? Why is this like an icky way to do it? And then you've got three different size shapes. Very good. So I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, this guy, which is a rectangle of this. These are also rectangles, but, <clears throat> excuse me, they're different rectangles. And so it's like, I've got to work out every one individually. In this one, it's not too bad because I've only got three of them. But what if it's like a bigger shape? And I'm trying to work out like the exact volume, not like an approximate thing. Okay. So we don't want to do this. We always want to get the perpendicular height. Okay. Now what's lovely about this, and this is why the heading was prism, right? is you can have a prism which has um, a square on the edge, or a, or a sorry, not a circle, um, a rectangle, or any shape you like. You don't even need to have a name for the shape, right? Like, so long as it's consistent all the way along, you cut up the same thing. Yeah, you can have a dinosaur prism, right? And you take, or a llama, or a giraffe, or a camel. No, it needs a hump, doesn't it? Um, and you can say, look, if you tell me what this cross-sectional area is, in fact, no joke, can we draw this shape? I'll just put it here, hope you can see it. Okay, draw this shape for me just as it is, with all of its square bits and all that kind of thing. Okay, I need some space. Here. So our, our um, dinosaur prism here, right? It looks something like this. Visual arts, that's cool. Okay, there we go. That is kind of what I'm looking at, right? Now, <laughs> what is that shape? Clearly, I don't have a like, oh yes, right along with my rectangle and triangle and trapezium formula. A dinosaur formula, okay? You don't have a formula for that shape, but that doesn't matter. So long as we know what the cross-sectional area is, I can still use the same approach. I can still say the volume is the cross-sectional area times the perpendicular height. So they will, if they give you a shape like this, which is irregular and weird, they'll just tell you what the cross-section is. So for instance, suppose this one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's convenient, okay? I'm gonna say this cross-sectional area is say 10 square centimeters, right? What is the perpendicular height? Looks to me like six, right? Did I count it right? Okay. So therefore, I'm gonna put over here, the height is six centimeters, okay? So my dinosaur prism, it doesn't matter how weird it is, I've got a cross section, I've got a height that's perpendicular to that cross section. If you like, think about, to try and make sure you pick the right length, right? Think about the cross section, where it is, and put it on the ground. Now it's the base, right? And then the height is what you normally think of as height. It's just gone straight up. So when I came with um, this, right? Where's the cross section? It's this triangle guy, okay? So put them on the ground. And look, there's the height, right? So you can think of it in the normal orientation. So what's the volume of this thing? It's gonna be the cross sectional area, times the height, which is super easy, right? It's just gonna be, yeah. And don't forget the units, okay? So this is not complicated.